Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I'm going to review another camera, a security camera and this one is also from Reolink. I have quite a few of uh, Reolink cameras and probably have seen many of my videos before in the past. This one is a special, it's not particularly a new product, I think this probably came out uh, a good six months ago, but what is new in the um, let's say the security camera scene is uh, well we passed the mega pixel battle so now all the cameras are at least like well definitely HD but most of like 5 megapixel or 4k but the new thing is object detection and this particular model it's the 510 WA and within the WA well the A actually stands for motion detection so as far as I can tell all the models that start with uh, sorry end with an A is a motion detection cameras there are um, sorry um, are object detection cameras and there are two in the Wi-Fi range so there is this one and there is one other and there are a lot more in the sort of like the wired and the POE range so what they do is um, all previous cameras they have motion detection and this particular camera has have image motion detection so the camera itself is looking at the image it's recording and if in certain areas of the uh, image the image changes because let's say somebody moves then that's going to be triggered as a motion or interpreted as a motion and that's how these cameras worked in the past and I always had an issue with them because there are a lot of things that can trigger motion, especially if, you are, if your camera is uh, you know, facing outdoors, uh, looking at an outdoors uh, scene, for example, rain and just leaves and uh, vegetation moving. But what is happening now is that whenever motion is detected, the camera is also going to look if it can recognize either a person or a car in the image. So then it would be able to tell you if it's a person detected or if it's a car detected in the, uh, in the image. That should help us to eliminate many of the false alarms because you can just set the camera to only tell you if there is a person or a car detected on the camera. And to be honest, I wanted to see for myself how good this image detection or this image recognition is, is working. So my idea was that I'm going to set up this camera, I'm going to run it for a couple of weeks, and um, I wanted to set up a Node-RED flow where I connect to this camera using the OnVIF node and I listen to the OnVIF event. And I was hoping, of course I didn't know this before I get this camera, that within the OnVIF event, I would be able to tell if it's just a simple motion or a person detection or a car detection. If you remember, I'd done a video on the regular 510, so not the VA or not the wireless version, and that was uh, sending me, you know, when motion is detected and when the motion stopped detecting. So I was hoping that this does something else. I mean, this camera, I just received it today. I was only playing around for a couple of hours. I wanted to get this early video out. So far, it looks like I can't able to get any event data using the OnVIF nodes. And probably it's not down to the OnVIF nodes in Node-RED. I'm thinking maybe just OnVIF in general because I was trying to use another OnVIF software. And, and when I looked at the events, there was nothing coming through the camera. So maybe this camera doesn't support it or I have done something wrong. Um, I'm not sure at the moment. But the plan was that I set up Node-RED uh, which is going to capture all the events, the detections, the, the and I will take a snapshot and later on I can do some sort of program where I can validate whether that detection was indeed based on, you know, person or, or a car within the video frame. So hopefully I will still be able to make that because uh, I'm just really interested in how good this image detection is, how much it can really tell you was a person or a car and vice versa. So that video is hopefully coming, I don't know, maybe in a couple of weeks. Let me quickly do the unboxing because after that I'm planning to install this camera and well, it's going to be mounted on, the, on a pole. So this is the last time I have it like close proximity within the camera. So obviously you get the main camera itself um, and it is the usual bullet type. I mean, um, from the outside it looks, I think probably undistinguishable from my 410W 
because that has the same bullet type body. Maybe this recess is, is a little bit different, but the, the camera lens and the IRI LED arrangement is definitely the same, and also the two big antennas. And the reason I like this, because this can work on 2.5 gigahertz Wi-Fi and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi as well. So at least I can get this one on the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. So that's going to um, make my 2.4 gigahertz a little bit less congested. On the end, I mean, you have these mounts that you can loosen up here and then everything moves around and then you have a couple of leads so you have a reset button you have power and you have ethernet and i usually use the ethernet to do my initial setup besides the camera i mean the antenna is uh, in a separate uh, uh, container within the box but you just screw it on you have a power lead with a I don't know how long the cable is. So basically, this is basically just a 12 volt uh, power adapter. And you have, well, at least I've received a UK and a European plug adapter to it, which you can replace. I've also received some cables. So there is an extension for the 12 volt. And there is also a small uh, network lead or network cable. I'm getting a couple of uh, various mounting screws and plugs and this waterproof uh, connector for the cable, for the network cable. So you can plug the network cable here and then put the cable through this um, cover and that's going to keep, uh, create a uh, seal around this connector. But I'm going to mount it everything in a box so I, I don't really need that. And besides that, you are also getting user manuals and reading template and a couple of uh, Reolink uh, stickers as well. Just like all my other Reolink cameras, this also has a micro SD card slot on it. So I don't have a network recorder at my home. So I'm just, I have just installed a 64 gig uh, micro SD card in here. So that's going to be used as a local storage. So whenever motion is detected, the um, short clips that are recorded by the camera are going to store on this uh, SD card. Let's have a quick look at how this device works in the app. I'm not going to go through all the features because I have done enough reloading videos and you know, like 80% of the features are the same as with all the cameras. So I don't feel like it makes a lot of sense to talk over the same things over and over again. As I said, it was really easy to set up the camera. I just connect it to the 12 volts using the power supply and to the network lead. And then, you know, I waited for about a minute to connect to my local network and I just used a plus sign and I just scanned the QR code, which is on the back of the camera. And once you are there, you can um, just specify the admin password. And once you have done that, you can just add a name to the camera. So this is the camera at the moment. And then you can go into the settings and set up the Wi-Fi. And then from that point, it connects to the Wi-Fi and you can move it to the final place. So as I said, I just received this camera. So this video is just going to be a quick introduction I will follow up the whole um, person and vehicle recognition in uh, probably in a couple of weeks when I have a better idea how it performs. But um, I set up this camera so it look at, looks at my driveway. So you see the garage door and then behind the bush there is my front door. So you, uh, this point should see you know cars going in and out and also uh, people going in and out. Therefore I'm hoping that this is going to be a good place for test. In the main user interface, uh, while well, actually we are live on the video, you can see the uh, data rate on the top left. <clears throat> I can pause this video, I can mute or unmute. Um, well, I can't uh, unmute it now because I have the screen recording and when the screen recording is running, then uh, like microphone and the other things are not, uh, uh, screen is not working in the, sorry, audio is not working here. But anyway, this is how you can turn on the sound because uh, it also records sound. You can take a snapshot and also you can take a recording and that creates a recording locally on your phone. And as we are going to go into the settings, you will see that how it actually records on the local SD card, which is inserted in the camera. And you can also change the rate. So there is the fluent rate and there is a balance rate, which is a high resolution feed. And of course you can go all the way up to the five megapixel feed. And you can see that the data rate goes up quite a bit. But to be honest, I think on a regular mobile phone screen, the fluent rate is just good enough. I mean, if you use the last button, which turns it sideways to full screen, maybe you can go up to the balance rate because then you have more screen to look at the details. And if you need, you can clip onto the image if we want to view a certain area. 
and on the other button which is the playback and this is where you're going to see the recordings so i think this is where i'm going to uh, spend a little bit more time because that's where we are going to see how well the recognition is working and <clears throat> if you have seen some of my other videos you probably have seen this screen before and you know you can select the date when you want to look at what has been recorded you can use this drop down as well and it's going to highlight the days when there is actual recording while well, my camera is uh, about uh, one day old so i just have some from yesterday and then most of it from today but what has really changed is you have this button on the lower left and when i click on it you can see that you can select whether the app should show you all the recordings and you or you can for example i deselect the last one those are the motion recordings and now you can see that the device is only showing the motion recordings where either a person or a vehicle was identified and you can see on the small icons so besides the you know sort of like a bell icon on the small images you can see a car on the first two and here you can see a person so if i look at this one um i was doing some testing i'm not sure if whether it's me or my missus but anyway you should see a person moving past the screen hopefully because well i mean this is what i wanted to and this is what i want to test how good this recognition is uh, maybe we just have to wait a little bit oh actually yeah, yeah yeah that's me i was really testing um you know if i really have to move close to the camera for me uh, to detect a person or it, whether it can detect a person if it's moving by in the background and obviously when these recordings are created it creates uh, it creates these recordings so it starts the recording actually a couple of uh, I don't know maybe it's 10 seconds before the motion starts and here we can see that there is probably a person walking by as well but there is a car and then uh, I'm guessing it has detected the person first uh, let me just uh, look at this one okay can i fast forward a little bit i'm not exactly sure what was the person on this particular oh okay there is a person yeah that's my missus taking out the uh the recyclable trash so as you can see it is working and let's say i have another footage when i think it was missus leaving the house and uh, i mean she was already in the car in the garage so you only see the car passing by in the recording so let me just fast forward a little bit oh no now she's coming back so this was detected by a car so i think you know based on this really really limited um, example i think it is working so the reason i'm really happy about this because it looks like that by deselecting the general motion trigger i can pretty much illuminate all the false uh, positives or the false alarms because it it really has to detect a person or a uh, or a car um, you know with these filters in order to show you something so it's really going to show you meaningful recordings and um, um, when, we, when I go into the settings you will see that I set it to medium and to be honest I haven't seen any cases yet where the camera would not identify either a person or a, a vehicle when I was moving past I think well definitely not a vehicle because well the vehicle is quite big but maybe in some cases when the person is moving by you know sort of like in the background of the camera maybe there are some cases where it wouldn't detect but uh, definitely as soon as you start approaching the camera sort of like 10 meters it would definitely see it as a person so at first glance it looks like that this person and vehicle recognition is actually working so let me go through the settings now so you can see how you know what you can do with the app so you have your main device settings so it's going to show you the you know the ip address and the device details and to be honest this device is really at the edge of my wi-fi coverage so i'm, I'm quite lucky that I, I was able to put it that far away because when we go into the network settings you can see that it's like it's like yeah you can see it's a single bar so in the network this is where you can set the uh, the Wi-Fi network is going to show you all the other available networks you can make some uh, settings to the display so if you have the camera upside down you can rotate it you can see uh, set some masks or the real link watermark image and well the real big thing is here in the detection alarm so first of all just like with any other cameras you can set a zone where you want the uh, 
the camera to look for changes and I just mark pretty much the entire driveway and the little bit of the garage door so it should be able to detect anyone passing by and um, within this area there are no you know trees and and bushes anything that would move uh, because of wind or anything like that so this is why I thought this is a good selection of the of the zones and I left the sensitivity to middle. Definitely if I move it to high, then I start to get a lot more false positives, or sorry, false alarms. So that's about sensitivity. And you can also change the sensitivity schedule. So if you want more sensitivity in the evening or during the day, you can even do that. And there is one more important settings which you might just overlook because it just says push schedule but it says also uh, customize detection types and schedule so you definitely want to come here because this is where you can specify what kind of notifications you want to receive so previously what i had is i had all the three types selected so any motion person or vehicle and this is where i was only getting messages like motion is detected and now i have uh, unchecked the any motion so if there is only a motion detected but without a person or a vehicle seen on the picture then i'm not going to get any notification but now i only selected these two and now my notification actually changed so now you can see that the app is sending me um, a notification that person is detected or a vehicle is detected so this is how you can just eliminate the general motion trigger and of course you can play around with the times whether you want to enable or disable notification at all so definitely make sure that you visit this push notification option oh and by the way in the camera recording um, I enable the recording so you can see here that the camera is going to re record to the SD card you can also create a schedule maybe you want only your daytime footages so you don't want the night footage and you can set the duration so there is a post motion record duration and of course there is a as you can see like a some sort of pre previous duration as well and of course if the SD card is full it's going to override the earliest recording you can also set up email errors so you can get uh, these um, pictures in email as well i've never used that and of course general uh, settings like you can share the camera um, you can also create some um, recordings so you can create different users data management you can also upload the camera uh, the footages into an ftp server and by the way i also want the audio to be recorded uh, I forgot to set that one before and there is one more feature which actually I've gone back to some of my other cameras and this time-lapse feature is not available on those as well but if you have a camera which is set up in a really nice location not not like mine you can also try to create a time-lapse so then the um, the camera is just going to create a recording um, okay if I want to do it a uh, sunrise calculate uh, sorry a sunrise then I can set that you know it's going to you know start at that point and it's going to re uh, create a one hour recording when the sun rises so I think it's a nice feature uh, I mean if you are really into security cameras probably it's not something that you want to use but I mean if you have an extra camera which is on the roof looking at sort of the, the sky or uh, any scenic place I think that's actually going to be nice and with this, I've reached the end of this uh, review. As I said, I'm hoping to follow up on the person and the vehicle recognition in a follow-up video. So that's going to take a couple of weeks, uh, maybe uh, a month because of the summer holidays. But uh, if you're interested, you should be looking for that in my channel. If you are interested in this product, there is going to be purchasing links in the video description. But I think that would be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.